Hey guys, welcome to our channel Code is our kid. This is Ashang David and in today's video we are going to talk about method overloading in Python. So before even we start this video, I would like to request you people to please like, share and subscribe to our channel Code is our kid and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you won't miss any future updates. So without any further ado, let's get right into the topic. Method overloading. When we talk about method overloading, we have learned about polymorphism topic, right? Where in polymorphism topic, we see these two words, method overloading and method overriding. When we talk about method overloading to be specific, in this video, we are going to focus on that only. So when we talk about method overloading, first we need to understand what is polymorphism. Polymorphism is same function doing different tasks. Uh, so if you haven't watched that video yet, I'll give the link in the description below. You can watch it from there or you can click onto this i button and from here you can watch your polymorphism video. Now once you have understood polymorphism, polymorphism same name function having different tasks that is polymorphism. When we talk about method overloading to be specific, this, now the same name functions are written in the same class. So if we talk about these two things overloading and overriding no need to get confused in this overloading happens in the same class while overriding happens in the different class means in overloading same name functions are written inside the same single class but in the case of overriding same name functions are written in different classes so we will talk about overriding in the other video but in case of overloading when we talk about overloading, we have the same class and so many different methods with the same exact name. So let us see how you would implement this thing inside any other object oriented programming language such as Java or C++. You will first create the class, then you will create multiple different methods. Now, when you create the same different same name methods, either their parameters are going to be different or their return type is going to be different. But in case of poly polymorphism in Python, in specifically in Python, method overloading is not directly supported. Why? Because only even if it doesn't matter if you write multiple different functions with the same name in the same class, no matter what, only the last function will work all the time. So let me show you what I'm saying. So first I'm going to create a class and in this case I have created a class called let's say I'm going to create a class called addition and inside this class I have a function called as def add okay so now if it is an addition function I'll pass some parameters inside this so I'll pass a comma b comma c okay now inside this I have said um s equals to a plus b plus c and now after that i can just say return s right now if i create a object of this class first so i'll say a equals to or i'll say obj equals to addition right so we created an object of this class called addition now if I try to access this object, or if I try to access this function from this object, so obj dot, if I say add, now it will ask the value. So, but because we are returning here, so we need to print that call as well. So I'll say print. Now, if I give the value of this as one comma two comma three, it will, it should add all the three numbers. So the result should be six, right? So you can see it's working fine, no problem, normal function. We have three parameters, three arguments have been passed. It is working nicely and we have got the results. But what if, if I pass only two parameters, two arguments and then it will give me the error, right? Because the number of parameters should be equals to number of arguments that we pass inside the function call. Now to overcome this problem, I can use overloading in any other language so for example to do overloading in any other language you would have created another same name function with the different parameters so that function was taking let's say this function is taking three parameters so in this case i'm gonna write only two parameters and body will be a little bit different then here in this case i'll write return s again right now, if I run this, see, this function will not work 
but this function will only work only the last function will work so now if i reduce see you can see now instead of passing three arguments i have passed only two arguments and from this it is working like this so in from this we got to know that in python method overloading is not directly supported it doesn't support directly in python so why so because when in python a program is executed at runtime what it does is it will read this function it will execute this function this function will be remembered but as soon as it will execute this it will forget this function and only the most recent written function will be remembered so only this function will be working all the functions which you write be before that will not work because it will find the same name same name so it will rewrite the same function again with two parameters now instead of having three parameters so this way you can't do method overloading in python so the question arises how to do that now to do this we have to do a trick for example i'm gonna delete this part and i'm gonna show you here let us say i can now i have this one single function right so from this one single function only i will show you how you can overload the same function so there's a trick for that and to do that what we can do is we can set the default parameters for this function for these variables as none in the beginning so i said a equals to i said none similarly i said b equals to none and similarly c i said none so now even if you don't pass any values inside a comma b comma c still it is going to work because it has value as none so by default it is going to take the value as none so it's you don't have to worry now for doing that anyway so instead of giving i said a comma 2 comma 3 if i run this it will still work right no problem it's working still as a normal function but what i can do is i can delete the body and i can say here if a is not equals to none and b is not equals to none and c is not equals to none then what you do you do s equals to a plus b plus c right and then i can just say return s so what this is going to do is by default even if you don't pass anything inside the function call it will still work because it will not bug you because the value will be taken by default as none but let's say in the condition when we don't have the value as none then it will do this it will add these three arguments whenever the value is provided in the three parameters it will do this let's say i'll write another elif in the second condition i can just say that when these two are not none so by default it will take this as none and if even if we write two values it will take it will do a plus b it should do that right so i can say elif inside elif i can say if a is not equals to none and b not equals to none then you do s equals to a plus b only and return s you understood what i did so now in this case c will be taken by default as none that means even if we provide two values by default c will be none so it won't bug again and only two values will also work in this case it will do a plus b you got my point so in this case this is how it will be possible now next is when we don't provide anything so what it will do it will directly say else part you can just say uh, return that same number so by default it will return a so whatever if you pass any one value it will return a if you don't pass anything inside it it will directly return none so this is how you do method overloading now this is the way you can do method overloading in case of python all right so now i have created this object again and i have just wrote the function call inside the print statement because we are returning here right so now after this 
if I run this with the three parameters, you can see that it is still going to work. If I delete one parameter also, it is still going to work. And if I give the same parameter, one parameter only, it is still going to print that same parameter. So I'll say three here, it is going to print three again. Because it is when it is taking one argument, by default, this case is being executed. When I'm taking two arguments, this will be taken because by default, a value is none. By default, three will go inside this a. So it will override the value of none and it will become three. And uh, when we pass six, the six will directly go into this b, which was none. So it will override from none and it will become b equals to six. And because we have not passed anything after six, so by default, c will be taken as none. So in that case, this, this condition will work. This whole block of code will be executed. And we will be able to do only the addition of two numbers. Now, when we talk about when we don't pass anything, it just returns none. Because none plus none plus none is equals to none. Because we don't pass anything inside this. So A is also taken as none. By default, B is also taken as none. And C also is taken as none by default. So by default, none plus none plus none, it will return none. There's nothing in this. And that's it. This is how you would do method overloading. So directly in Python, we don't have method overloading supported. And this is the trick how you can do method overloading. Unlike any other programming language like Java, there you have created multiple same name method, def add, def add, def add again, again, again. But in this case, in Python, we have just written one single function. And inside this, we have written conditional statements and inside that we have written the condition. We have created three scenarios and we have executed the code according to how many number of parameters you pass into it. And this is how, this is the trick to do method overloading in Python. I guess you have understood this well, guys. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you have understood this well. If you have any doubts, you can ask us in the comment section below and we are going to cover that doubt as soon as possible. And that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Ashank signing off. See you guys in the next one. Happy learning.